Delilah and Ian, a British couple travelling with our Bernese mountain dog Delilah. We've given up work, sold our house, given away our possessions and now we're having a full life van tour. So come and join us, we're uh, finishing off in Europe as we make our way back to the UK, so after van MOT uh, and so come and find out about how Christian faith and van life work together on, on a, a wing, wing and, and a prayer. prayer. So absolutely beautiful that we've decided we need to walk back to have another look at it. So this is the last village in Austria. Ah, oh, they've got all the national costumes. Wait till you get through this tunnel. It is absolutely beautiful. So we had to drive the van through here <laughs> and we both ducked our heads down as if it's going to make any difference. So I think we're three metres and this is 3.3 .3, so by the skin of our teeth we got through. This is where we are. Obernerd. That's Delilah panting because it's been a heck of a walk. And this is where we are. A beautiful little village square. I don't know if you can see the tree. So the tree is all decorated. So we're going to have a little wander. Yeah, mission accomplished. Have a look at your cake. Look at that. I've got coffee cake and we've got English breakfast tea. And Mr. Ray's got like a roulade, strawberry roulade. Happy days. little site we're on. Really nice and like naturey. The only problem is we've just been to go and have a swim in the outdoor pool and because there's a thunder and lightning storm on its way it's closed and they won't let us in. We said we didn't mind we're English. We do lots of things in the rain. 
She said, no, it is not possible. So we're gonna have another adventure. We're gonna go out on the scooters. So here we are with our wet weather gear on and we're ready. You see the clouds behind. The nearest town is two kilometers away and it's called either Bad Fusing or Bad Fussing. So we'll go and check it out. And your scooters. <laughs> Show us how it's done, Mr. A. Yeah, click it up like that. That's the most technical bit. He's on his bad boy scooter. Yeah, yeah. gonna ride, ride. Oh, you've got your light on. <laughs> oh, that would waste my battery, wouldn't it? Okay, off you go. I've got to get on to some wooden thing first. <laughs> <laughs> and he's off. <laughs> we made it to the centre of bad fusing and this beautiful park's in the centre so we've come to have a look at the ducks and then we're going into the town it is getting late on so I don't know whether things will be open but hey ho turn around let's look at the back of your legs Mr A for mud and pebble dash So when you've done a bit of activity like clinging on to a scooter, you need to replace your energy. So you young ones might have your Red Bull and your Prime drinks. Do you want to know what the older generation use for energy? I'll show you. Good old Werther's Originals. Come another way back. And as we've come another way back, we've come to another little market square. Absolutely lovely. Come and have a look at this building. I don't know whether it's really old or whether it's new trying to look old, but it's very impressive. Oh, I think it's the real McCoy. strike again. We are in the centre of Munich and we have a number of things on our itinerary that we'd like to see. The National History Museum, the Palace, the English Gardens and... <laughs> I want a beer. <laughs> <laughs> we also want a beer at one of the famous beer houses but we've kind of jumped on buses and trams and uh, we don't even know if we've got the right tickets. <laughs> We don't even know if we've got the right tickets, but oh, here we are. Know. Let me show you. This is the centre, and in the centre of Munich, there is an immense green space. And this is the English Gardens. So this is the start of our journey in Munich. We've walked through the English Gardens, and we're now in Central Park. And we're not very good at this touristy thing simply because we keep seeing all these lovely things and changing our minds and where we want to go. So we've not actually visited anything, we just keep walking around. But this is lovely for the centre of a city. Very peaceful. I found your shop smell. They're actually guarded at the door. When Googling Munich, it comes up with this hyphen house. And it is the most famous beer house in the city centre. So it would be rude not to. We're going to go and have a pint. Or half a pint, I think. And this is the square that it's That's in. That's the Irish pub. <laughs> no, it is. I know. I know. So these are all different beer houses. This is the one that we're going in. And if we don't like what we get, we'll go across the road to the Irish pub. So this is where they hold all the drinking festivals. It's very hot, very loud and very, very noisy. 
so I think we're going to sack it off and go to the Irish bar instead. Oh, here we are, in Germany, very continental we are. We've got Irish beer, <laughs> we've got Italian pizza, and later on we're going to, oh, sorry, Greek salad. <laughs> and then we're going to go across the road and we're going to have a beer in the beer, German beer. Hyphen house. Hyphen house. Centre of Nuremberg, and we've come into the Cathedral of St. Lawrence. And the ladies are very, very welcoming. They've given us a brochure because we don't speak German, otherwise, they would have given us a tour of the place free of charge. Sometimes it's quicker and easier to just get a sightseeing bus. Um, so we're on a little train today in Nuremberg and we're going to have a look and get all the information and all the history of walking. I'll show you the 
Yeah. Right in the centre with the market. There is a lovely story to this fountain, and what it was was the um, blacksmith of the city. His apprentice fell in love with his daughter and he, they wanted to get married and they, he said absolutely not, you're only an apprentice, you can't support my daughter. So he spent a whole night fashioning a ring and he fashioned it so beautifully that you couldn't tell the beginning from the end. And legend says he woke up and saw this ring and once he saw it he thought it was so beautiful he allowed them to get married and this is the ring and so now people turn the ring Whilst we were on the train, we learnt um, some history about the Nuremberg sausage. And it's particularly small compared to most German sausages, and I'll show you because I've just... <laughs> small and now we've eaten. We've just bought one. <laughs> so the Nuremberg sausage is really quite thin, like our British sausage. And the reason for this was a wealthy merchant lost all his money, went bankrupt. And he was put in the debtor's tower and he had an absolute passion for sausages. So they developed this tiny thin sausage so they could poke it through the keyhole in debtor's tower to uh, feed him. So here we go, I'm going to eat the Nuremberg sausage. That's gorgeous. <laughs> this is a happy boy who is true to himself. I don't know how many countries he's been to and he's tried all the different KFCs. He's right. Cheers. <laughs>